What's going on everyone? This is Lior with Compass out of Boston and in this video we're going to be talking about some of the pros and the cons of living in Somerville, Massachusetts. So let's get at it. What's going on everyone? My name is Lior and I'm with Compass out of Boston and in this video we're going to be talking about some of the pros and some of the cons of living in Somerville, Mass. Now before I get into that, two quick things as always. Number one guys, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, smash that subscribe button. I put out tons of new videos every single week all about what it's like to live around the Boston area. Tips on buying, tips on selling and so on. So if you haven't already subscribed, smash that button. And number two, if you guys are thinking about doing anything with real estate around the greater Boston area, whether it's buying, selling, investing, whatever it is, I get so many calls from you guys watching my videos and I absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about doing anything, hit me up, call, text, email, hit me up on Instagram, whatever it is, and I will help you out. So let's get into today's content. We're going to start with the pros and then go into the cons of living in Somerville. And we're going to start with pro number one. So pro number one is the absolutely amazing uh, transportation system within Somerville. Um, right now, you've currently got both the red line and the orange line going through Somerville. Um, so the red line, you've got stops in Davis, you've got stops in Porter. Um, then the orange line, you've got uh, Assembly Row. And then right on the border of Somerville and Charlestown is, uh, is Sullivan Square. So a lot of parts of Somerville are pretty close to some sort of MBTA stop which is absolutely amazing, right? Because so many people that live in Somerville um, either work downtown or like to go into downtown for some sort of fun, right? Whether it's a night out, restaurant, whatever it is. Um, so right now you've got amazing access. And not only that, but they're also, you probably heard me talk about this in other videos, but they're currently building out an extension of the green line of the MBTA system into Somerville, um, which is gonna include a number of stops, including Union Square, you're gonna have um, you're gonna have East Somerville, Gilman Square, Ball Square, uh, Magoo Square, and then Tufts as well uh, towards Medford. Um, so now you're gonna have basically three. You're gonna have the red, orange, and green line all going through Somerville. So from a transportation perspective, uh, for any of you guys that are gonna that need access into the city or com or need a you know commute via the T, it is gonna be absolutely amazing. Um, so that is why it's pro number one. Now, pro number two is Somerville's got an amazing food scene. Uh, if you go to all any of the major squares, right, if you go to Unions, uh, Davis, Porter, even the small ones like Gilman, Ball, um, et cetera, you're gonna find such a, you know, you're gonna find such a nice mix of unique restaurants, shops, uh, little cafes, uh, you know, each one's got, there's so many different flavors, a lot of independent um, restaurants and shops in Somerville. Um, that just have so many different types of cuisine. So if you are a foodie or you need a good mix of food options, Somerville has definitely got you covered. Pro number three that's awesome about Somerville is it's got also a great brewery scene. So if you need to hit the brews, right? If you're like me and you love IPAs or if you're a cider person, you, Somerville has got you covered. There's a number of options in Somerville. Uh, you've got Aeronaut Brew and you've got Slum Brew. Uh, you've got Winter Hill Brewing Company. You also have Bantam Cider. Um, so a really great mix of, uh, brew of breweries around Somerville. You're obviously super close to other areas that have uh, breweries like Cain, Charlestown, um, Everett. But Somerville itself has got a number of really good options, um, which is pro number three. And finally, pro number four about Somerville is the Somerville Community Path. Uh, basically, it's like a mile-long path for pedestrians. Um, it goes from David Square up to Lowell Street. You can look it up, um, but it's amazing, right? If you walk there during the day, um, you'll see plenty of locals who walk there. You also have a lot of visitors. Um, it's really a beautiful walk, a lot of joggers, etc. cetera. Um, it kind of provides a nice little like uh, secluded open space um, that makes it really, really nice, especially since Somerville can be so, it's so densely populated. Uh, it's nice to have some real open space that you can walk around with without having to worry about cars. So, so uh, the community path makes it pro number four. 
All right, so now let's talk about some of the cons of Somerville. We're gonna start with number one. Uh, we talked about the Green Line extension as a pro. Now there's obviously a con with this because there's a lot of construction going on in Somerville, right? So if you drive by these squares where they're currently extending the T-line, um, you know, where Union Square is, where East Somerville, Gilman and Ball, et cetera, there's a lot of really heavy construction going on right now. It's gonna last for a while until they obviously finish these projects. Not only do you have the green line being extended, but you also have the high school being re um, you have a high school being uh, built up. So between these two major, major projects, there's a lot of construction, uh, you know, which does make it a con since it, it's definitely a little bit of an inconvenience, especially when you're driving in Union Square. On number two, Somerville, um, kind of in comparison to its neighboring uh, city, Cambridge, the tax rate is pretty high. Um, so if you're going to buy a residential home, residential property, um, the tax rate for the year of 2020, um, for every thousand dollars of assessed value um, in Somerville, it, you pay ten dollars and nine cents. Whereas in neighboring Cambridge, um, you have a tax rate of five dollars and seventy five cents. So it's like, oh, I mean, it's like basically 60 percent of the cost um, in Cambridge. So Cambridge is really well known for having like an absurdly low tax rate. Um, but for whatever that, that is what it, you know, that's how they do it over there. Um, so when you do compare Cambridge and Somerville, uh, you will have a higher tax rate than if you bought just over the line in neighboring Cambridge. Call number three uh, in Somerville is the parking. So Somerville is a really densely populated city, um, especially when you're in close to the squares, right? Like we talked about the Union, the Davis, the Porters. Um, park, you know, finding parking can be pretty tough. I mean, you know, every time I drive there, sometimes, you know, it usually takes a little bit of time to find parking. Um, you know, so if you are going to be a resident there, you can obviously get a street uh, street permit for parking. Um, but still, it can still be a little tough sometimes. And if you're not going to be a resident there and you park there, they are really strict about ticketing. I've got multiple tickets in Somerville. Um, so that's another thing to consider. I mean, you obviously, um, with all the T-stops, you, you know, it's obviously very commuter friendly. And I know a lot of people that don't have cars or don't or barely use their cars when they live in Somerville. But if you're going to be a heavy car user, just that's something to think about. Uh, you know, parking's definitely a little bit more of a challenge um, in Somerville. And finally, call number four, um, you know, this is kind of more specific depending on the home you're going to live in. But a lot, you know, obviously Boston, Greater Boston has a lot of old houses. Somerville is no exception. Um, you've got tons of homes that were built in the late 1800s or 19, early 1900s. Uh, but one thing that we've noticed in Somerville in particular is there's a lot of old homes with slanted floors. Um, now I know to some people, it might not really sound like a big deal. I personally had buyers um, and met people that really don't like that and they think, you know, and it really turns them off. Um, Somerville, for, in, for whatever reason in particular, tends to be a little bit notorious with the old homes where they have a lot of, I call it slanting action. Um, again, usually it doesn't mean anything's wrong because typically um, as long as the foundation of the house is checked on, it's fine but you do see that quite a bit in the older homes where you will have wavy floors, some slants going on. Um, so if that's something that does bother you or what you think will bother you, pay attention to that, especially as you're if you're shopping in the older homes that haven't necessarily been renovated uh, recently. So that's all for the pros and cons guys of Somerville. Um, I just chose some of the ones that I really thought would be fun to share with you guys. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, put them below. And like I said, guys, I get so many calls from you guys who watch my videos. Um, and I absolutely love it when you guys ask me questions about what it's like to live in neighborhoods, what it's like to buy, sell, invest. So if that's you, reach out to me and I will take care of you.